Good morning, Michelle Arnott here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio. Thank you so much for joining me. In today's video, we will be making the 3D diamond. So here is what we will be making today. And we will be making a slightly smaller version of this. So if you order this from my website, you will get a pattern that has three different sizes. So you'll have the 100%, which is this size. You'll get a pattern to make the 75%, which is actually what we're gonna be making today. And then you'll also get the pattern to make the 125%. Uh, so I just wanna show you a couple of versions of what you can make, um, like you saw in the intro. This here behind me, I decided to make into a little terrarium. It actually lays flat on the counter. Uh, this is the 125%. And that one looks like this. So I just did not put the top on this and made it into a little terrarium. And I just thought those were so cute. You could actually hang this um, from the ceiling if you put hooks on it. Um, but those are just a couple of ideas. A couple of more ideas is instead of putting this top on it, any size, you could put a hinge and lay it flat and use it for a jewelry box. Um, I've got some other ideas you can hang um, like a bigger one and then hang a smaller one from it and a smaller one from it. You can make these diamonds the colors of birthstones. There's so many ideas and I actually every time I make a video I want to make and show you all the different things you can do. But Christmas is sneaking up on us. I wanted to get this video done because I do have one more jig and one more 3D project that I want to introduce before the end of the year and before Christmas. So I wanted to get this one done. So I'm gonna make the 75% uh, diamond, 3D diamond today. And we will be using again from Game On 3D, a jig that my brother Mark prints in his resin printer. These are very durable. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to make this, uh, make the 3D diamond using this jig here. So let's get started. So we are ready to make our 3D diamonds. So here again is the 100% that I showed you earlier i have already cut out everything that i need for the 75 percent diamond so when you order this from my website what this is right here is this top one and it clearly states 100 percent and they're color coded so that the 100 percent they're all red the 75 percent not only does it say 75 percent in the shapes, but it also is color coded in blue. And then the 125% is color coded in green. So, and in the intro, I showed you that I did make 150%, but what I did to make the 150% is I resized it on my printer. So I took the 100% and resized it to 150% because the 150% will not be included in the kit, but you will get these three sizes. So, like I said, um, I have the 75% all cut out, and you will notice on these pattern pieces, this says, here's A, B, C, and D. A times one, so you need one of these. B times eight, so you need eight of these. C times eight, so you need eight of these. And D times eight, so you need eight of these. So I have um, done that. Here's my one A, my eight Bs, my eight C's and my eight D's. And then I'm going to first use my B's. So I'll set the other ones aside. So here are my eight B's and we're gonna grab the jig here. I've used this jig several times um, and it cleans up well, it's heat proof. If you've used any of my brother's other jigs, you will know that they are very durable. Um, you can use them over and over, they are heat proof. It doesn't matter if you drop solder in these, it will wipe up um, really nicely. So I'm going to place, start placing these right side up. So all of my B's are going to be upside down. Now, again, this is the 75%. And as you can see, these are fitting in here very easily. Um, even when you get to the 100%, those also fit in here very easily. Um, when you get into the 125% and larger, so of course the 150%, 
They are going to be so large that they might want to try to fall out. Um, so in this kit, I am going to include one ounce of the museum wax. Um, so I purchase museum wax. It comes in 13 ounces. You would never get through this. Well, very unlikely you'd get through this whole thing. So I portion them into one ounce cups. And if you would like to know more about uh, more in detail how to use this museum wax, please feel free to watch my uh, hexagon succulent video. And I use this to make the larger petals of the succulents. Um, and this is, you just um, use this applicator. You put a little bit on the back of your pattern piece. It sticks onto the jig um, really nicely and it cleans off of the glass. It cleans off of the jig really nicely. So the museum wax works great for the bigger pattern pieces, but for the 75%, I don't need that um, because these are going to fit just fine. Um, I just have to keep going around to try to meet them up as good as possible. Um, so this is this is uh, eight pieces here. So that is an octagon. Uh, so then I'm just going to put a little bit of flux and tack these pieces together. Uh, I moved them around a little bit, so I'm just going to re-situate them and make sure they're as good as they possibly can be. Okay, so now I'm going to tack in all of those spots. And it's not unusual for some of the solder to drip down in the bottom. I haven't done that, but um, it does happen. And don't worry about it. Like I said, it no, oh, there it happened. It will not melt this jig. Just wait for it to cool and flick it out of there later. So now that I have it tacked, now I want to go in and get the seams a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to use my handy wedges. And if you have watched any of my videos you will know what the handy wedges are because I use them all the time. It kind of acts as a third hand. Um, these are on my website, diamondrockglassstudio.com. They come in very handy for any of the 3D projects. So, um, and I have a lot of 3D projects available on my website. Please feel free to take a look at them. Um, my brother Mark prints these jigs. Um, We've come up with quite a few so far and we still have lots more ideas. And um, I wanted to get this video out because I am, I mean, I'm excited about this video because I think these diamonds are so cool. Um, but the next one is, um, I don't wanna say it's more cool, but um, it's more versatile. There's more you can make with it. So I'm gonna explain more in the next video. So please watch out for that because I think you're really gonna like it. I know I'm really excited for it. So now I'm just using the handy wedges to make uh, each line a little bit more flat. So I'm just gonna get, touch, touch these all up and solder all of these inside seams and go all the way around. Now that I have all the inside seams done, I can take this out um, and see that solder that's melted in there. That's cool enough. Now I can just flick that out and there is no damage to the jig. So now I want to get these outside seams. So again, I'm gonna use the handy wedges. Um, for this small one, I just need the one. If it's, if it's a larger um, diamond, Sometimes I, I use this to prop it up higher, but I don't need to do that with the 75%. It's pretty small, so this will work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all, all of these outside seams next.
Then I'm going to fill in the center hole from the back side. And I have not tinned this outside part yet. Um, I'm going to show you that part next. And this top part, or maybe it's the bottom, depending on what you want to call the top of the diamond, I'm just going to fix this part up, just smooth it out a little bit. That's good. So now we're going to get our jig back out and we are going to collect all of our pattern C's. So that's, there's these two small triangles. There's the D and the C. We want all of the C's. So that's what I have laid out in front of me. And you'll notice on the C's, there is one side that's a longer. Um, so you want to um, be able to identify what is the longest side and you wanna make sure that you've got some flux, at least on that long side for now. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use this jig and connect these pieces to um, this piece that we already have. So on this jig, you will notice that there is a little lip or a little ridge on one of the sides. So that one, um, let's see, can you see this? There's a little lip right there. I hope you can see that okay. So we are going to use that lip to first let's see you're going to put this flat on your board but i'm going to lift this up a little bit you're going to have this flat against your jig and you're going to have the the bottom of this situated to that lip there and you're going to have this down on your board so my cone, I'll just call it a cone, is sitting on that lip and it's also sitting flush on the side of the jig. I'm actually gonna take my gloves off so I can work with this a little bit better um, and the gloves won't be in the way. So I've got enough flux on the cone and I already fluxed the top of all of these triangles. So basically, this is going to go at the right angle here. So as you can see, there's eight of these triangles that are going to connect at the correct angle on these eight sides. So by situating it flush on the side of the jig and putting, I hope you can see this, but I'm just going to put some solder right in there and get all eight sides. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'm gonna to try to situate my camera a little bit better so you can see what I'm doing. So now we're gonna have something that looks like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and strengthen these up. I'm gonna run some flux on the outside and be real careful to keep that angle correct. And I'm just gonna add some stability to this outside of all of these seams. I'm gonna put my glove on for this. You really should wear gloves for most of this. 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just carefully hold this and just add solder right on all of these outside seams. And now I am going to go ahead and run some flux on all of these pattern piece Ds. Um, I am going to end up fitting each of these Ds in here. I don't need the jig for this part. So I'm just gonna carefully flux the outside of this diamond and each of the uh, diamond or the triangle shapes uh, letter D's and then add each piece in there. Now I'm going to wash this and then we will tin uh, the top or the bottom and attach that piece. And then I'm probably going to add some hooks and maybe hang this one from the ceiling um, with my 100% with a 75% hanging from it. So I washed this part of the diamond. The inside and the outside are all washed with flux remover. I have fluxed the copper foil on the octagon piece that's going to fit here. So now there's usually always a way where it's going to fit the best. Like here, it looks like it's fitting the best right like that. So, um, and there's a couple ways you can do this. You could lay this flat and put this over it and solder it from the side. Or if it's fitting up good enough like this go ahead and start tacking it uh, in a couple of spots like this um, and this this um, can be tricky this is the trickiest part of the whole project um, because you cannot 
you do not want to drop any solder on the inside. That looks like it's meeting up pretty good. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start tacking a little bit. So since I washed the diamond already, I do need to run a little bit of flux on the diamond part that I washed. And I wanna get at least one drop of solder here. There, now it's, I can at least let go of it and work all the way around. And again, being very careful not to get any solder on the inside. So actually, if you wanna lay it flat now, this way you can ensure you're not going to get any solder on the inside. You can kind of run some along the bottom and then fix that up, kind of close in any gaps that there might be. So let's try that. Like I said, this is the trickiest part of the whole process, or the whole diamond. So if you leave the top off, you don't have to worry about uh, matching the top up perfectly because you won't have a top or a bottom. I don't know, is that the bottom of your diamond or is that the top? I don't know. That's working pretty good. I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more solder on the bottom to just close up any gaps to avoid any solder getting on the inside of the diamond. So I just wanna show you, I put four small hooks on every other point on the top. And then on the bottom, I put a large hook and I put four small hooks also on the smaller one. Now I'm going to go now I'm going to chain them together and suspend them from the ceiling and I'll show you how that looks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are new to stained glass or you need a refresher, please feel free to go back to my very first video. It's about 55 minutes long. It's called How to Make a Sun Catcher and it walks you through every step of the stained glass process. So from picking out your glass uh, to first picking out your pattern and then your glass, how to cut, grind, foil, solder, and finally finish your piece. It's all taught in that first video. So you all have a great day and thanks again so much for watching.